Scoring routes. So when you finally get those pesky other colored cubes out of your way and you fill the whole thing up with your cubes, you get to score the route. And it takes an action to do that. And then you have a tough choice to make. Do you want to place an office? Or do you want to get an ability? In order to get a special ability, you need to have completed a route that's adjacent to one of these special ability towns. How can you recognize the ability towns? Well, they're a different shape. They're sort of a castle shape. And on the new edition, the cities have yellow banners, so you can clearly see which cities grant you abilities. And there's a big yellow scroll adjacent to that city to show you what ability you get from it. Scoring abilities is marked on your player tableau. You start with a player tableau, and there are five different tracks that show all of the special abilities. And the special abilities are covered by cubes at the starting setup of the board. And how you mark that you earned a special ability is by removing one of those cubes and placing it into your active supply. So you actually get another bonus from getting the special ability, and that is another cube. So if I finished a route to Lubeck, Lubeck is an ability town, I would say I'm going to score the ability. And I would look on my player board, and I'd find the Lubeck ability, which is the money bags and I would remove one cube from that ability. And that would reveal what that ability is. And I would take that cube and put it in my active supply. So I get the ability, and I sort of get a bonus cube to use immediately. Let's go over those six towns and the special abilities that they give. First of all, we will start with the fiercely contested Gotinin, or for you Americans, Gottingen. This city's ability is to give you more actions. And the action track goes like this. You start with two, and then you get three, three, four, four, five. So your first time scoring this ability is going to allow you to go up from two actions to three actions. And you get the action immediately, so when you score that, you get another action for that turn. And for this reason, it is hotly contested very early on in the game because people really want that bonus action. And then, of course, it takes you two more times of scoring that ability to then get to four actions. Two more times will get you to the maximum amount of five. This is powerful, as if you have one more action than everybody else at the beginning of the game, you're going to be able to do 150% more than they are. Though the other actions can be quite powerful as well when used correctly. The next special ability is Lubeck. Lubeck is the money bags action, and the action track says 3, 5, 7, and C. What does money let you do? It lets you refill quicker. Remember, at the beginning of the game, you can only refill three cubes with one action. As you remove cubes from the money bags, you're going to be able to refill faster. Five cubes refill, seven cubes refill, and C means clear, or you get to get all of the cubes that you have and put them in your active supply when you take that action. The next ability town is Stade, or Stade for us Americans. This action track has different colors on it, and it's called Privileges. White, orange, pink, and black. What does this do? Well, remember when I was talking about placing offices. Most of the city spaces have white areas for your cubes in which you can place an office. And in white areas, anyone can go in that house. But further down the line, there are orange, pink, and black boxes. And in order to place an office in these boxes, you need to have the required privilege. So the more of these privileges you have, the further down the track you are, the better capability you're going to have to place more offices. In fact, the other thing I should mention is that in some of these cities, there are cylindrical spots. And for those, you need to obviously place one of your cylinders. And some of them are cylindrical and colored, so you need to have a cylinder and the correct privilege. The next city is Groninen. Groninen is the book track on your tableau. And the book essentially gives you two different bonuses. At the beginning of the game, you only start with one of those special cylinders to use for blocking and for placing in special offices and areas on the board. To get more of these cylinders, you need to score the book ability because the book track is filled with your cylinders. There are three more cylinders that you can get. There are also numbers underneath those cylinders. You start with two, and then you can get three, four, and five. This book ability represents your ability to move cubes on the board. Remember, as an action, you have the ability to move cubes. You start with the ability to only move two. But if you increase this ability, you can move cubes more quickly on the board. 
So Grondinen, the book ability, gives you m- more merchants and the ability to move cubes on the board quicker. So those are the four that are really going to let you set up trade networks more efficiently. One gives you more actions, one gives you a quicker refill, the other one lets you take more office spaces, and the book gives you merchants and quicker movement. The last two are more for end-of-game victory points. Let's talk about Coelin. Coelin has four gentlemen holding barrels with numbers in them, 7, 8, 9, and 11. And those barrels are cylindrical, which means, guess what? You need the merchants or the cylindrical pieces in order to place into those victory point spaces. And those gentlemen are also wearing different colored outfits, white, orange, pink, and black. And so in order to play in the larger ones, you need the appropriate privilege. You don't have to place these in order from left to right. Lastly, we have Hala. This city gives you town keys. What do town keys do? Well, one of your goals is to set up as many adjacent offices as you can. Because at the end of the game, you're going to be able to get a point for every adjacent office and cities you have on the board. So if you have five cities with offices in them that are linked by roads, you'll get five points. What the town keys do is multiply this bonus. The town key track goes one, two, two, three, four. So it's always pretty good to get that first one because then you double that bonus. But you can get even further down. If you're planning on playing a lot of offices, say for example you you get seven offices adjacent to each other, and you get to the town key that says three, you're going to get seven times three, 21 points, which is a huge chunk of points. The town keys are something that you can either go after if that's part of your strategy, or something that you can pretty much ignore if, if you're not planning on playing a lot of offices. If you haven't seen the board, all of these ability towns are in the corners of the board. Three of them are in the lower right, bottom, and lower left corners, and the other three are in the upper right, upper center, and upper left corner. So there's a lot of play in these corners of the board. So why would you play towards the center? Well, there are two major cities called Arnheim and Stendhal on the left side and right side of the board. And the first person who manages to make a connection between these two cities with offices linked by roads gets a sizable point bonus. The first person to do this gets seven points, second person gets four points, and the third person gets two points. So if everyone else is ignoring this, someone might decide to go after this big bonus for connecting from left to right. The other reason you might play towards the center of the board is at the beginning of the game, three bonus markers, which look like dinner plates, so I'm going to refer to them as dinner plates, are placed adjacent to three routes on the board. And the first person to connect the trade route that is adjacent to this dinner plate is going to get the dinner plate. The dinner plate is worth points at the end of the game, and it also gives you the ability to use a special ability pictured on the dinner plate, which will help you in the game. If you earn a dinner plate, you take it face up to use its special ability, and they have a wide range of special abilities, from being able to send back cubes of other players, to getting a bump up on a skill for free, to getting extra actions. When you use it, to flip it over to show that you've used it. You can use it on any turn. But the end of the turn in which you collect a dinner plate, you have to replay another dinner plate from the stock onto the board, so that the board will always have three dinner plates on it. Usually a good strategy, of course, is to play them adjacent to your offices, so when someone tries to take that dinner plate, you get a point. And this is a good time to review that whenever someone scores a route, you have to look on either side of that route and see if a player has an office in a city adjacent to that route. And if they do, they score a victory point, and you mark that on a track. If more than one player has offices in a city, then whoever has the most cubes is considered to control that city, and they would get the victory point. If there's a tie, if both players have one cube, then the player furthest to the right is the player who has control of the city. And that's where having those privileges to get into those houses that are further to the right has its benefits. Though when you place the offices, you must place them left to right. You're not allowed to skip spaces. All right, so let's review what happens when you score a route. When you score a route, you have to choose whether to place an office or to get an ability if you're next to an ability town. If you do score an ability, you mark that by removing a cube from your tableau, your little personal player board, and add that to your active supply. The six different abilities are get more actions, money bags, which give you a quicker refill, privileges, which let you get into more office spaces, the book, which gives you more merchants and quicker movement, 
Coelan, which has spaces for victory points at the end of the game, and Town Keys, which multiply your adjacent offices score at the end of the game. You also want to be aware of the big bonus that can be earned by connecting Arnheim and Stendahl. And you may want to consider collecting dinner plates. And when you take a dinner plate, you can use the ability at any time, but remember, at the end of your turn, you have to add another dinner plate, so there's always three on the board. Remember, when a route is scored, remember to score either side of it if there's an office on the cities on either side. Whoever has control, meaning whoever has the most cubes or is the furthest to the right, gets to score one point on the victory point track. And yes, it is possible to give yourself points in this manner. You could even score two points if you controlled both cities on either end of the trade route. And that's about everything you need to know about scoring routes. The end of the game. All right, so round and round and round things will go. How does the game end? There are three different end game triggers, and the players have a good amount of control on when the game ends. So you're going to want to pay attention to whether you want to try to force the end of the game, or whether you want to avoid those things that might complete the game. There are three ways that the game can end, and when one of these three things happens, the game ends immediately. The player doesn't even get to finish his turn. The first way, remember how we're going to be scoring points when people score a trade route and it's adjacent to an office? There's a special mark on the score track at the 20 line, because if any player gets to that 20 line, that triggers the end of the game. The other way players can get more points is by connecting Arnheim and Stendahl. You get those points immediately, so that could trigger the end of the game. In my experience, this is the most common way that the game ends. But sometimes you'll run out of bonus markers, out of those dinner plates. If you take one and there isn't one to refill at the end of that turn, the game will end. And finally, there's a city track marker on the board. Whenever a city fills up with offices, you increase this one spot. And if this marker gets to 10, that will end the game. So throughout the game, you've scored a few points from offices, and maybe you connected that big connection. But almost all of the scoring happens at the end of the game. There's five different things that you can score points for. Let's go over them. First, fully developing abilities. There are four abilities on your player board that are marked with a little brown circle that says four on it. And that means you get four victory points if you get to the end of that track. And that's the action track, the money bag track, the book track, and the privilege track. It's kind of hard to get to the end of these. And if you do, you get a four victory point bonus at the end of the game. The keys doesn't give you a four point bonus because it gives you a bonus in the multiplier. So it wouldn't make sense to give you a double bonus. Next, dinner plates, those bonus markers. Don't forget that those will score you points, which is one of the reasons to try to go after them. The more you have, the more points you get. It's not quite a one-to-one -one ratio. The points escalate if you manage to track down a whole bunch of these. For getting one, two, four, six, eight, or 10, you get one, three, six, 10, 15, or 21 points respectively. So if you manage to claim 10 of those bonus markers, you could get 21 points. Not very likely, but possible. The third thing you get your points for is you finally score those points for the guys holding barrels down there by Coelan. You can get seven, eight, nine, or 11 points for that. Keep in mind, you can get more than one of those if you're able to. And these do not have to be filled from left to right. Next, controlling cities. All right, so if you control a city, that's worth two points. It's not just enough to have presence. You need to have control, which means you have either the most cubes in that city or if it's a tie, you have the cube that's the farthest to the right. And you get two points for each of these cities in which you have control. And finally, the last thing you get points for is for your largest network of offices. You're going to count your largest group of offices that are adjacent to one another. You are allowed to branch. It doesn't have to be a line. And you get one point for each of these offices that are adjacent to each other, multiplied by your number of town keys. So if I had five offices next to each other, maybe I had a couple offices other places, but that was my largest group that was connected, I would take that five, multiply it by my town key number, which say for example was two, and I'd get five times two, which was 10 points. And those are the five parts of endgame scoring. Fully developed abilities, bonus markers, Coelan points, city control, and adjacent cities times the town keys.